How do I change unhealthy family patterns? What's up, you guys? Welcome to the Therapy Brothers Podcast. I'm Brandon. I'm Tyler. We're brothers. We're therapists. We're not afraid of your questions. So bring it. great question coming from my brother. Um, But before we answer that question, quick review here. It says your podcast has helped me so much and I've never found such useful content elsewhere. I found your resources to be far more helpful than one-to-one counseling. Thank you so much for all the effort. So that's great. This is not counseling. This is not therapy. Uh, This is a podcast. So take it for what it's worth. Um, if it's as helpful as therapy, then awesome. That's great. Um, thank you for the review. We need more reviews, you guys. Please go to iTunes, leave us a review. Um, it's really, really helpful for us, and we'd really appreciate it. Yeah, Brandon, it's pretty cool. Like you were just saying, I think we're fairly, we're fairly new at starting this thing, and every week we've had numbers grow in terms of the number of downloads. and So we know that we're starting to reach a few people. Um, but one of the best ways that we're able to reach more people is really through the feedback that we get from you who are already listening. And so thank you to those who have. And if, you, if you're getting some value out of this, one of the best ways that you can support us and support other people getting the information is by leaving us a review. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You got the question? You got the question. It's a long writing. one. So it's a long one. So buckle up. All right. Okay. Okay. It says... How can I heal the wounds inflicted by my father? When I was around 11 years old, I caught my dad looking at pornography. At the same time, I was in the beginning stages of pornography use. In my young mind, I looked at this as an opportunity to come clean to him about my struggles because I now, I now knew that he struggled too. When I confronted him about it, he denied everything. When I kept pressing, he eventually admitted to me that he had been looking at it and that it was wrong and that he wouldn't do it again. He also told me not to tell my mom. He said that there are some things that we need to just take care of ourselves so we don't hurt her. Over the course of many years, I just kept diving deeper and deeper into my own pornography addiction. I'm finally in recovery, and I'm working my way through all the shame and bad habits, one of which is immediately looking for ways to hide things from my wife, which I believe was taught to me by my dad. I recognize that there are some things that are not my fault but are still my responsibility. I feel like it's my responsibility to forgive my father for putting me in the middle of him and my mom and to carry his secret for over a decade, but it's very difficult. I actually did an intake with Brandon about a year ago and he advised me to talk to my dad about it and set boundaries. I told him that he needs to talk to my mom or I would because I can't carry the secret anymore. He talked to her and we have begun the process of healing, but I still struggle with opening up being up to him about anything. I can tell that he's trying and that it's hard for him to see me not be so open with him. I know that he just wants to be a good dad. I feel like he is a good dad, but I don't know what the steps are to healing the relationship. Just feels awkward all the time. Do you have any advice or guidance on what I can do as a child who is wounded to heal the relationship? I would be very grateful. Thank you. It's a great question. It's Um, a really good question, man. There's a lot of stuff that we could crack into it just in this question. It kind of depends on what vein you want to go down. Well, before we we answer the question, I just want to say I do know who this is. I I remember you and um, a beautiful family, wife, amazing wife. Um, You got a lot to fight for. And um, this guy is a, a guy who is trying to be a resilient man and not a man who is trying to repeat patterns of behavior in his life. He's trying to rise above, not not to say that his dad is bad, but he's trying to rise above what was taught to him as a child. Um, And I I just applaud him. He's, He's just a good man. So thank you for the question. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, And me and Tyler would just take one piece at a time. So where I'd like to, to, to kind of examine Tyler, is uh is generational patterns of of un- trauma and unhealthiness basically um, it is amazing how we become our parents and and we automatically start to repeat 
very similar patterns of unhealthy behavior. And when I do, I, so I'm, I mostly do intakes now, Tyler, and people tell me about their parents and their grandparents. And I'm like, and, and they come in, they're like, why am I the way I am? It's like, well, do you see where you come from? You're just repeating it. You're just, it's just automatic for you. You know, do you see that too? I see it all the time. And as you're talking, Brandon, I'm having this memory from a long time ago with, uh, I was a freshman in high school. I decided to run cross country um, in the off seasons of the other sports that I like to play. And the very first day of cross country, I had one of the seniors on the team come up to me and I had these brand new shoes that mom had just bought, you know, and I was all proud of them, but they're like squeaky clean, like shining. And one of the seniors came up and he took both of his feet and scuffed them all over my shoes and said, nobody runs in clean shoes like that. And then, uh, and then we went to practice. And then I remember several years later when I was a senior, I hated that kid for doing that to me. And I did it to some <laughs> freshman that was on the soccer team. You know, and I'm like, why did it, why do we repeat history like with things like that? Like you're, what was, what was man, that all about? I just want to say you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could apologize. In fact, I am apologizing. Hopefully you're listening. So <laughs> Um, I should have scuffed your shoes up when I was a senior. Right. Well, a lot of the uncon, a lot of the patterns are are, are unconscious. It's it's automatic. Um, I I just see, um, you know, we're we're different than our parents, but it's amazing the way I, I believe it's kind of an energetic thing where I take on the energy of my ancestors. I take on the energy of my great great grandpa even who had issues, who gave those issues to my great grandpa, who gave those issues to my grandpa. And, and, and now I'm holding them in some way. Um, and so here, here's this guy, he's talking about um, a living a double life, um, secrecy, hiding, um, hiding things from somebody as a, as a means to escape the consequences, pain. pain. And um, you can imagine as a young boy, he's already hiding who he is sexually. Um, he's already tormented spiritually some. And then dad says, actually, like, keep doing it. In, in, in a roundabout way, that's what he's saying. Like, just keep kind of the facade going. Because through his example, he's teaching him that. Yes. Right? Um, and it's so easy as a child to say, oh, okay, that's what you do. But there's another part of us that looks at it and is like, well, you know, I, when I think of my truth, it doesn't sit right with me. So, so now there's a contradiction. Yeah, so there's a contradiction between what we know is actual truth and living in our truth and, and feeling peace and what we're being taught by our parents. And a lot of times we go with what our parents teach us. Uh, because that that's all we know to do, although it doesn't feel healthy and it doesn't feel right, right? That's right. Um, I, I often show, and I think a lot of our listeners will probably be familiar with, the David Foster Wallace commencement speech, This is Water, and the, the little story that he tells at the beginning where there's two young fish sitting talking to each other, and this older fish swims by and looks at him and says... Hey, fellas, how's the water? And then swims on. And one of the younger fish looks at the other one and says, what the hell is water? Yeah. And uh, in, in a lot of ways, that's sort of what happens to us with some of these, like, we call them agreements for life, that they're almost instilled in us at, in a way that we don't actually become aware that they were optional. They just, yes. feel like, they just feel like truth. They just feel like, oh, that's the way we live. That's the way we do things. That's, you know, that's just how it is. Yes. And, uh, and so then when you get in, you get into where you're saying your truth, there's this inner, this inner story that still says, no, that doesn't feel right to like hide something from mom, even though I guess that's what boys do to protect women sometimes. Right. Um, and that, that incongruency is actually what often feeds more of the kinds of things like this uh, question came through where the shame comes in. That's the biggest trauma them. right there. Exactly. That incongru incongruency that dad's teaching, like live this way, live in this shame, feed the shame. Yeah.
right and he's actually in a way this i don't think dad meant to do it because he was probably swimming in his own water he was actually telling his son that the way to be a man is to hide things from people you love because then your your wife or women won't be hurt right instead of saying don't hurt your wife by doing things that hurt your wife right 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 um so here's the thing tyler the how, how to how to get out of these generational patterns i i, I want to kind of illustrate some other ones right so you know for let's say a young woman who um starts trying to get her worth from from men or from being sexual being you know like like really struggling with that well you, you oftentimes you look at mom and it's like well the same thing has happened with mom um for the for the uh the person who's struggling with with you know food addiction and eating a ton of food and and just like gorging and and you know all their emotions they're numbing out with food well you look at mom and dad and what do you know um you, you'll find that there oftentimes um so these are just some examples this this example of this guy and the pornography and hiding things from a from a spouse that's one example but you can look at a lot of problems even anxiety you look at anxiety mom dad haven't modeled on how to cope with life and so they have a lot of anxiety and they live in anxiety and fear well they pass that down to their kids this is how this is what you do you don't know i don't i don't know how to teach you how to cope um so you're not gonna cope and then you're going to have anxiety um the first step to break generational patterns is you need to want to um, you you, you got to look at the consequences of your life, the outcomes that you're getting, and ask yourself, is this what I want? And two, do I believe that I can get something different? Can I? Is there hope that I can actually change, or or am I just my dad? Um, so so it's a desire to change and a belief that you can. Um, that's that's where you start. Would you would you agree with that, Tyler? Yes, I think the first the first step often is actually, and it's sometimes brought to us because we can't see it, is to actually see that there's something that needs changing. Um, it's and then we have to want to change it. But so, sometimes that's thrown in your face. Sometimes that's a wife walking away. It's uh, you, you know, you might be suicidal. You might you might be to a breaking point where it's like I've got something's got to give. Something say, something has to shift. I, I would say that I would say that more often than not, for most of my clients and probably in my own life, the biggest shifts that have brought the awareness have been emotionally or physically violent moments that that bring that right up to your face and go, "Oh wow, I I didn't realize that I was just operating this way as a way of being, yes. and now I have a chance to go, wow, I've been." I've been making this choice for so long. You know, and I think it's like, you know, maybe a couple other examples as you were talking, Brandon, think about this for all of who, those listeners who have children. How many of you have said to yourself, I'm never gonna do what my parents did. And within the last three months, you've caught yourself doing what your parents did. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, right. whether, whether it was being physically violent or saying something shameful or even repeating the exact same phrases that you heard from your parents that you just always hated as a kid. Um, those things, those things are there, but unless they're brought up, which is often through something really painful, we don't get a chance to see them. But then after we see them, I totally agree with you, Brad. And that's kind of where we have to go. You have to say, okay, now that I know there's a problem, do I, do I even want to consider changing that? And in order to do that, we have to look at the consequences. We can no longer be in denial that there is a consequence. Right. Um, for our choice to live those ways. Right. Um, that's, uh, so now, you know, we're, we're, we're big on not being a victim in life, right? Like, so, so now if you look at this and you look at the consequences, you start to believe, you know what, I don't want those consequences. Then you, you can shift, you can change. Um, but oftentimes people still don't Tyler, that they, 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 the consequences are there. They're aware of them. Um, why is that? That's a really good question. You know, I look at like some of our friends who struggle with things, excuse me, struggle with things like um, 
say like type two diabetes that is 100%, you know, solvable, fixable, and all it would take is just the right kind of lifestyle changes. And instead we have people who are literally dying young, way too young because they know they should do better, but they don't. And, and what I, what I think I see happens a lot of the time here is, is that it's, it's that third part you talked about the hope it's number one is the, is it actually possible? Number one, a lot of people don't believe it's possible. And part of the reason why they don't believe it's possible is because they're listening to and believing a narrative and a story about themselves and their lives that is actually false, but it feels true to them. Well, there, way, Tyler, there's ahead. a whole system around that person. There's a whole family system reinforcing thoughts and beliefs that lead them to those outcomes. So it, there's not a system that reinforces the opposite. So, you know, it's like, like, let me use my food addiction example. You know, if, if like you're in a family where food equals fun and food equals holidays and food equals everything, then all of a That's sudden you're like, Patrick's. yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm like, Hey, I want to change this pattern in my life. Um, I, I want to be resilient. I don't want to repeat the patterns that, that have been given to me. I'm still in the system. So I'm still, all these inputs are still saying, no, 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 no. Like this is, this is who we are and this is what we do. Right? And it's powerful, Brandon. It's magnetic. You know, I, I stopped drinking soda probably seven or eight years ago. And the only times I've relapsed on soda have been at family parties. <laughs> 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 because it's like this, like it, it, it's that rut of habit and it's the pressure of the system. It's, you know, people joking around and saying like, you know, what happened to you? Like you used to love sitting back and, you know, drinking a cold soda or whatever. And, and then when you're around it, then you got the triggers and then you're back in the habits. It's just this, it, it is, it's almost magnetic. There's a, there's a term that you learn in like family therapy school called homeostasis. And what that term means is, is that at a family system level, there's patterns that get established. And the minute that those patterns become habit, then anytime somebody in that system tries to break away, the entire system will actually try to pull that part, that person back into the same pattern. Right. Because, because change is seen as a threat. Right. Instead of progress. Right. Look at this guy who went to his dad and said, dad, like you've had me hold this secret for years. And Dude, that um, took so much courage. Oh, Oh my gosh. So, so, but, but look at that. I want, I want to examine that a little closer here because, because in that holds one of the, the critical like keys to, to breaking generational patterns. Um, we, we, we stay stuck in these patterns because it's comfortable. And so it's easier for somebody to stay in the system and be part of the system um, and, and to live that way. Even, even, if I, let's say a pattern that's been passed down to me is, is I'm, I'm unlovable. Like I believe that I'm unlovable. I'm not loved. I'm not loved. It's more comfortable for me to believe that I'm not lovable than to show up as a lovable person. Yes. Isn't that crazy? But I it's, know it sounds, it sounds nuts, but, but you see it proven time and time and again in the way people live. Right. They, they stay there because of it. It's, it's an identity and it's comfortable in, in that identity and in the systems that are reinforcing that identity. So, so let's come back to the guy who asked the question. Okay. Um, his dad basically gave him part of his identity. We, as men, we look at porn and we hide it. That's what we do. We, we hide scary things from our spouse because we can't handle the consequences of that. That's what we do, son. That's what we do in that that, that, that guy, and this is part of his resilience, he had to face some discomfort to break the pattern. There's no way around it. If you want to break generational patterns of unhealthiness, you're going to have to practice some courage. You're going to have to step into some fear, and you're going to have to be uncomfortable, right? There's no way around it, right, Tyler? Yes. That's the only, that's, that's really the only answer. And, and to, to the end of his question, he's saying, basically, he's gone and done this. And in doing so, he's made waves. And, yeah. and the interesting thing about the waves he's made is that in his question, 
look at what's happening to his whole family tree. Like he went and confronted his father. His father decided to finally step into his truth and actually become clean and honest. Yeah. And now he's got a dad who's starting to work recovery, who wants a relationship with him, but that relationship is now strained and it's awkward. And isn't that okay? Right. That should, that, that's totally fine because this, this one transitional figure here, the guy who's asking the question today, he's, he's literally changing the family tree on both sides. Oh, you're talking about the future. His yeah, sons, I'm, talking, his, I'm talking about the future and his sons. His son's I'm talking sons. about the fact that he opened up by being courageous. He opened up an invitation to his own father to confront the very same patterns that he's trying to overcome himself. Yes. And so I think part of the answer to his question is to continue to do the things he's already been doing, which is to be honest and transparent with his father and to let him know, hey, I see you as a good dad and I want a relationship with you. And at the same time, this is awkward because I'm struggling with some things. I have, and I don't know if he's, he didn't put these in his questions, but I would bet he feels some of these things that he feels some tinge of anger for having been taught those things. And he feels some little bit of struggle and sadness and grief over having been taught those things. And probably... Are- probably deep guilt and shame when he rip, like steps into some of those patterns of behavior that he's been taught. He knows oh, he's been resilient. He knows he's confronted his dad, but then when he does that very thing, it might be that much more shameful for him because he doesn't totally. want to be his dad. Right. Totally. A hundred percent. But, but part of the answer is to you know, use the word courage to step back in with that. And so he's saying, Hey, how do I re- kill this relationship with my father? Well, you could either let it go back to the way that it was, which was you being his little henchman. Right. Or both of you are stepping into the truth. Love him and speak the truth to him. Let him right. know where you stand. Let him know what you want. Let him know where you want to be working towards, but also be transparent with him about exactly where you're at right now. Right. Because that puts you both on the, the, the ground of reality. And when you're in reality, then you can both make better choices. Right. I, I want to I add another um, important piece to this puzzle. Okay. Um, and what that is, is we're talking about the system. We're talking about the, the, the messages, the identities that are given. You can shift that. And, and it really matters what you, um, surround yourself with. So have you seen that YouTube with the metronomes that all the metronomes are sitting independently of each other? There's probably 30 of them and they, they start going and uh, they're all going in a different cadence and everything. And in about a minute, maybe two minutes, they're all going in exact the same cadence together, although they're s- sitting separate from each other. Um, so it's a look, YouTube it. It's a real I'm thing. I'm going to check it out. You're making yeah. me think of something else, Brown, and it goes along with this. When I was being trained in, uh, in mindfulness, when I was working for the drug courts, my boss came into our our uh, program development meeting with 25 therapists and he made us do this collective uh, meditation. And what it was is we were supposed to basically sit in a certain kind of position. And then we were just supposed to repeat at our own pace, at our own frequency, at our own, you know, um, loudness, just, just the word ohm. And people started off at all different places, but within just a couple of minutes, the entire room was, Oh. In the same tone, doing the same thing. And there was yeah. this like, I know this sounds pretty cheesy to some of our listeners, but there was like this really powerful feeling of collective unity. And it had all kind of just lined itself into literally the same frequency. Yep. Yep. I have a friend who's a, a good friend of mine. And he was raised by a, a drug addict mom and a dad who, who was not present in his life. And he endured all kinds of horrible stuff as a child. And um, I know his older brother and his older brother has in a lot of ways turned into his mom and dad. Um, My friend, on the other hand, um, latched on. He he noticed a family in the neighborhood who was just thriving, a good family, just, just, just a solid structure of family. And he latched onto them and he just hung out at their house as much as he could. He just, he just hung out there. He just was there. Um, what do you know? This guy now has a wife. He has three kids. He has a solid job. He has an excellent, beautiful family. 
um, fully functioning adult in society, contributing. Like he, he's a good, good man. I believe, I believe the most critical piece to that puzzle was, was the input that he had of love and mentorship from something outside of the system that he was given. Right. Right. And well, and, and I think this is a, a key element of what you're talking about is that he had to make, whether it was conscious or subconscious, and maybe it was just survival in his case, but he had to make choice to put himself in a different scenario. Um, yeah. And, and he's very boundaried now with his mom, his, his biological mom, he's boundaried with her, like, and it's uncomfortable, but he has to be. And, and that, so he faces that discomfort of, of cutting away and letting go of, of his family and, and, and in a lot of ways has a, a very different relationship with them. He faces that discomfort and, um, and, and doesn't repeat those patterns of behavior. That is resiliency. That's 100%. what we're talking about today. 100%. I, someone that you know, Brandon, that's very close to me, um, had, similar, had a similar life where there was some real wounding that went on in his early years and he ended up in a lot of different places. I, you name the addiction, he's had it. I wouldn't be surprised if there's illegitimate kids all over the country. Like it was just, his life was out of control and he got to the point of being completely 100% suicidal because he knew deep inside what he was doing was wrong, but he couldn't seem to get himself stuck out of it. And uh, in a lot of ways he was going the same way as, you know, the generations before him and he hit this sort of moment where he paused and he said, my life is really like a dumpster fire right now. Hmm. If I were to look around and look at the people in my life that mean the most and doing the best and seem to be the happiest, who would they be? And he made a list of basically three families and then he spent the majority of his time interacting with those three families and in doing so he turned he yeah. changed he he placed himself he basically was that dissonant note in the wrong song and he put himself into the song and eventually he was able to get his frequency to come and line up with the place where he wanted to be go yes going and that's and that's an important thing to think about here when we're trying to make these changes and break away from these patterns is, is we have to look around and say it's not good enough just to stop something we have to find the frequency that we really want to resonate in in the way that we're playing the music of our own life and then we have to go put ourselves in a place where that music gets played yes yes and so until we line ourselves up with it and it's really uncomfortable to do that sometimes yeah uh, i'm telling all sorts of stories today but i'm thinking about like when i was a freshman in high school again this is after i had my shoes scuffed um <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a, there, there's a basketball clinic at school and they had two age groups. They had an age group for the juniors and seniors, and they had an age group for the freshmen and sophomores. And for some reason, dad decided, I signed, we signed up and dad decided to put me in the age group for juniors and seniors. And I was just this scrawny, like 120 pound freshman. And I, I went the first day and uh, I just got worked, you know, like, the coach was looking at me like, hey, you're in the wrong place, like, you know, and so I went home crying and, you know, I wasn't very, <laughs> wasn't very excited and I kind of wanted to quit. And, and dad said, no, you can stay there. You're gonna be fine, you stay there. And, um, and it sucked, that whole clinic sucked, I hated it. And I was terrible. But what it did do is it kind of pulled me up in some ways to a higher level than I would have been operating if I would have just been in the other same place that I'd always been. Is this an attempt just to toot your own horn a little bit? Because <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if it is, I'm going to barf all over my computer. So right it's, funny. It's, it's funny. I was trying to illustrate a point, but yes, Brandon, like, you know, Rihanna and my wife, she, uh, she often claims that I have Asperger's disease, but not because I'm like, you know, on the autistic spectrum, but just because I act like an ass all the time. So, <laughs> so, so, so maybe, so maybe that's what's happening right here. I, that wasn't intended, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Your point is is taken though, which is, yeah. you know, you were put in a situation that, yeah, but 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 you had an opportunity to crumble, or you had an opportunity to take on that challenge and 
and start to soak that in and start to work harder and, and, and shift out of what you were. Um, I, you have I to be, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable for a while and accept that that's going to be the choice you're making. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm taught that I'm one way in my life. This is, this is what a Patrick is, or this is what a whoever is, whatever your last name is. Then all of a sudden you put, put in a different situation. It's uncomfortable to say, maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm going to be another way in my life. Um, and maybe I'm going to believe that I can be different. I, I think, Tyler, here's the things. That I, I kind of want to sum up some of the things we've talked about. So first, like really take a look at the consequences of your life and ask, ask what you want. Um, second, um, become aware of what the patterns, unhealthy patterns behave, behavior are. So become conscious of that. Um, third, uh, be willing to step into some discomfort and uh, practice some courage. Um, fourth, surround yourself with inputs that are different than what you've been around um, so you can shift those beliefs and, so, and, and experience it, feel it, shift it. And I would add another one in there, which is education. Educate yourself about what is different, what is healthy. That's why therapy can be so helpful. Um, in therapy, I say all the time, when your family of origin starts driving you crazy, um, then you know you're getting healthy, <laughs> right? So, so when you're educated about something different, other possibilities, you see other, other ways of doing things, it's like, oh, oh, I, I'm educated now. And you're surrounding yourself around people who are doing things different and, and, and creating things different, then you're going to step into creating different. You're going to believe that you can. Um, so this guy in his family, I want to come back to the guy who asked the question in his family, dad is modeling unhealthy behaviors. He's getting educated. He's stepping into discomfort. He's talking openly about, about what he's doing. He's meeting with me, you know, maybe he's attending groups or, or being surrounded by people, other people who are trying to break patterns. Um, in a lot of ways, I hate to tell him this you are doing the right things. This is a process. Um, and you're, you've already taken the big steps, the hard steps to shift out of this, this unhealthy pattern in your family. Um, so continue, like Tyler said, continue to do what, what you're doing. He's fighting for truth, man. Like I'm, I'm reading the question and I'm just reading between the lines. Of course, you always try to infer things when you're trying to help a little bit, but this guy's doing it. Like he's, he's the ideal client. He's the client you, when you see him on your schedule, you go sweet. Like, yeah. I'm probably going to learn more from this guy today than I'm going to teach him. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's a hard thing. And if, if you're struggling and still feeling some of that, like awkwardness, it's okay. Like it, you're, you're in that process of ironing out and you know what your relationship with your dad, it may not look the way you had always hoped it would by the time it's all said and done, but it'll feel healthy if you'll keep wrestling with it. And um, you may never be like best friends with your father. If, if it, a lot of that will depend on how much he wants to live in the truth that you're trying to live. Um, yeah. if, if he does, then you'll be great friends. And if he doesn't, you'll still be able to love him and be grateful for him to acknowledge that he's a good dad, like you just said. And, uh, and then maybe keep him at a different distance with your boundaries and you'll be okay. Somebody in, some, somebody in denial and who wants to stay in denial um, will not want to be in a relationship with a truth seeker or, or a vulnerable, authentic person uh, because it's too uncomfortable. So there will be distance. There will be discomfort there. Um, quick story, Tyler. I had a years ago... Um, I had, I had this a client I was working with, and I know he'd let me share this story because he's shared it before. I'm not suggesting this is healthy in any way, um, but it, it just illustrates a point. Um, there was sexual abuse in his family growing up, and um, sexual abuse from, from uh, dad to, to his sister. And it's interesting what happens with that because all these other consequences come from that. The family system starts protecting dad. Um, there's a lot of lies. Mom has a lot of resentment, but she's protecting dad. So there's just a lot of disconnection in the family and it affects the whole family drastically. 
Um, and so he grew up in a family like that, like all is growing up. He was a, a, like a 40, I think he's like 48 year old man. And he was sick and tired of the system. He was, he was so done with it. Um, had his family over for Thanksgiving, put the turkey on the table and said, hey, before we uh, say the prayer, I just want to say that dad molested her and we all know it. <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> well, Thanksgiving was, uh, was a little awkward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not suggesting you do it that way. Um, but but the reason I, there's a reason I'm telling this story, Tyler. And here's the reason. Um, he got to a breaking point. He was sick and tired of the patterns. And he, was, he, he handled it probably wrong um, in, in that way. But he was courageous enough to be like, enough is enough. Change needs to happen. We are done with this, right? Um, so I, I think, I think it, it's, I think every person, every single person, you, Tyler, me, um, goes through this, this thing where, you know, you grow up and you think mom and dad got it all figured out. And then you, you start to become an adult and you realize, oh, mom and dad don't have it all figured out. So then what does that mean for me? Like, how do I, like, how do I show up in my truths? And um, there's almost a grieving process of like, oh, mom and dad weren't like the perfectly safe, perfect people. They're humans. Um, they're, they're humans with flaws and imperfections that have affected me in an unhealthy w way. They're just trying to figure things out. You're doing that to your daughters and I'm doing that to my kids. Everyone hates that thought, but we, we, have, we have to look both directions. And the truth is, is that no matter what we do, we're going to do the best we can and we're going to mess some stuff up and, uh, and our kids are going to do the same things. But, but I hope, Tyler, that my kids will grow up and, and uh, what, what I don't hope is that they grow up and they, they think, oh, dad, he was a therapist. He had it all figured out. He's amazing. He's just the best. I hope they think I'm the best. I hope they love me yeah, and all that. Of course. But I hope they also realize my dad didn't have it all figured out. My dad was imperfect. My dad made mistakes. And I need to reconcile some of that stuff inside of me. I need to self-reflect because I want my kids to be a lot better off than I am. And if, if that takes them seeing all of my blemishes and all of my mistakes, then please do that. But I, I ask my kids to do that. Um, I, I, I hope they end up in therapy in a way, in a proactive way to be like, yeah, let's search this out. Let's figure this out because I want to be a healthy human being. Right. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's beautiful, Brandon. And I think, I think it takes, in order to get there, it takes a lot of shame resiliency to, to be able to say that, you know, especially being loaded with the idea of parents, but it's true. One of the beautiful things about this is that you get in the mix and then adding in other family members, you get married or something, and all of a sudden you start to see patterns that you didn't even realize were there. Oh, you're, 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 when you get married, it's like or the reflector's like, whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, we're, we're this unhealthy? I, what? I just, I just can see the water now, basically. <laughs> yeah, dang it. It's like, shoot, man, I kind of want to stay in denial over this now. Oh, yeah, um, dang it. There's, there's in some ways, it's really painful. And in other ways, it's a real blessing. And, and hopefully we do do that with our kids. And we turn around and, you know, I, I don't ever want my kids to think that I was perfect. I don't, because I know I'm not. And if they think that, I'm harming them. Yeah. Um, I do want them to know that I'm doing my best. But what you don't want them to do is to repeat the unhealthy patterns of behavior that you have. Um, right. I don't want my kids to do that, right? Right, and I, and I hope that, and I know that the day's coming. It's, it's unavoidable. The day's coming where one or both or all of my daughters are going to come to me and say, hey, dad, like, the way you did this sucked and it really hurt. Or, or the way you're doing it now. Like, yeah, I'm going to have a boundary with you right now that yep. it's not cool what you're doing here. Right, and, and I, hope, I hope that I'll be in the position where we can, I can meet that with curiosity and say, okay, let me look at that instead of go, 
that's just the way it is. Right. Which, which this guy's dad was somewhere in between. Yeah. It sounds like his dad somewhere is moving in, in the direction of saying, Hey, I want to grow. I he wasn't total denial. Yeah. Or right. anger at him. Yeah. Yeah. I, so. I kind of picture his dad being like, um, the movie warrior, which is one of my favorite movies that father who had done so much damage being an alcoholic and not available for his kids. And all of a sudden he wants to be involved with his adult boys and their families and they don't want him in there anymore. And like, he kept coming and he kept saying, I want to be involved. I want to be there and I want to support you and I want to love you. And he made the shift. And, and it sounds to me like our, our callers question, you know, today his dad is in that same boat too. And so I'd say to his dad, if he's listening, keep stay the course too like things are going to change you guys are both in the process of change and it's going in the right direction and you can support each other through it so absolutely all right you guys if you like this episode if you got something good out of it if you're changing patterns in your family um then share this with your brothers and sisters and your mom and dad (laughs) and uh thanks for listening you guys and have a great day see ya